Okay, so let's start off with a quick acknowledgement. Nobody actually enjoys paying high prices for anything. And this is especially true for like important things like healthcare. If people have to pay high prices for things like yachts, yeah, it's a bummer. But at the end of the day, we're probably not going to feel all that bad about people buying yachts, right? So what can we do to actually bring prices down in areas that are important? Well, one thing that's been proposed is what we call a price ceiling. And a price ceiling is a legal maximum price. So if you don't like the price of something and think it's too high, there is absolutely nothing stopping us from signing a law that prevents the price from being too high. We could set the price of anything to anything we want. When a price ceiling is in effect, sellers are not allowed to charge any more than whatever number of dollars is decreed to be correct uh, for a good or service. So wouldn't a price ceiling make things cheaper? While they do reduce the monetary cost, right? so the monetary cost does go down, the total cost ends up increasing. How is that? Okay, so let's start off with a real simple example. All right, we'll just start off with an ordinary market, price and quantity on the correct axes, downward sloping demand curve, and an upward sloping supply curve. And let's say we have an equilibrium price of, how about $500, okay? And then there's like an equilibrium quantity uh, that doesn't really matter, so we'll just call it Q1. Let me grab a different color marker, okay? And we say, hey, 500 bucks, that's way too expensive. Nobody in their right mind can afford this. And so what we do is we pass a new law that says, hey, the price of whatever this is can't be any more than $300. Well, based on the first law of demand, we can readily understand why the quantity demanded is going to increase. At lower prices, people want to buy more of this. But at the same time, we can also understand why the quantity supplied is actually going to decrease. If you're paid less, then you'll produce less. Okay? So now we have more people wanting this good than we have the good available. So here we would say that the quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supplied. Now, um, I should point out that uh, in order for this price ceiling to actually have any effect whatsoever, it must be the case that the price ceiling is below the equilibrium price. If the price ceiling were set above the equilibrium price, then the equilibrium price would just remain. So for example, suppose that colleges uh, aren't allowed by law to charge more than $1 million in US dollars uh, per year in tuition. What effect would that have on your college's tuition? Well, almost certainly none, because almost certainly none of you are paying a million dollars a year to go to college. And so in order to have any effect whatsoever, the price ceiling must be below the equilibrium price. Okay? And this is kind of a weird concept, right? Because you would think a price ceiling would be up here, because that's what ceiling is. The ceiling is up high, right? Well, here, the ceiling is down low, right? And why is that? Because economists are thinking that we're going to try to raise the roof, right? And so here, with a low price, you got to raise the ceiling, okay? <clears throat> or you can think of it this way. Uh, economists, if they built houses, would build them upside down because the ceiling's on the bottom, okay? Now, remember that at any given time, there is only so much of anything that actually exists in the world. The question is how is it going to be allocated among all the people who actually want it? In most markets, we use price to allocate these scarce resources. When the price of something is very high, only very few people will actually get it, but they'll be less frivolous with what they do end up getting, at least for the most part. When the price of something is low, lots of people will get it, and they might get so much of it that they're not as conscientious of its uses. So for example, have any of you ever taken a long, hot shower after a hard day at work? Feels good, right? Couldn't you have taken a shorter shower 
and donated that clean water to someone somewhere else in the world? I'm pretty sure you could. And if the price of water was higher, I bet that even if it would have felt really good, you would have taken fewer long hot showers. Or, to put it another way, if water was expensive, you'd be less likely to take those long hot showers, wouldn't you? So when we have low prices, we have a high quantity demand. Let's think about this in the context of doctor visits. Suppose that you can now see any doctor you want for a mere, let's say, $10. So we'll change this to 10. Okay? As in, the legal price ceiling on doctor's services is now $10. And let's make this super easy and suppose that there's no form of payment from insurance companies or anything like that either. What do you predict is going to happen? First, we should understand that a lot of people are, are going to want to go see the doctor. Okay? A lot more probably than currently do. So the question becomes, how are we going to allocate these doctor's services? Because remember, there might be a lot of people that want to see the doctor. But there's only so many doctors, and there's only so many hours in the day. And so we're faced with constraints about how many people can see the doctor in a given day. So how can we allocate the existing amount of doctor services? 